Well, Obamacare was atrocious. It was a lie. It was foisted on us by a party line vote, and we are living with the consequences of that foolishness. However, there are people who are thinking up new ways to approach the problem of health care. Elaine Parker joins us, the president of the Job Creators Network Foundation, on their Health Care for You proposal. Elaine, welcome to The Schilling Show, and thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me. So Obamacare really broke a system that was working, it was functional, it had some issues, but this just pushed it over the edge, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think we can all start from the point of view that there were things that needed to be fixed in the mm-hmm. previous system, but Obamacare did broke a system even more, broke the system even more, and it is, it is really restricted patient freedom and choice. Um, and what the Democrats are proposing now, a Medicare for all system, a government, a pro- government top down, one size fits all, will absolutely eliminate both. Um, you know, Medicare for all is simply Obamacare on steroids. And that's why the Job Creators Network Foundation um, has, for the last six months, uh, has conducted the largest market research healthcare study um, ever, at least that we know of, involving more than 25,000 American voters. This wasn't polling. This wasn't a survey. This was true market research to find out exactly what the American people want in health care policy, in health care plan, what they want to pay for, not what the government tells them they should have like Obamacare did. And so what we've done in Health Care for You, which is the name of the campaign, um, and your listeners can go to healthcareforyou.com and take a look at everything, um, we've developed a framework for health care reform from the inputs of this research that will help repair, restore, and improve the patient-doctor relationship and remove the D.C. bureaucrats and politicians from healthcare decisions and ultimately increase choice and, and competition, which brings down prices. It happens in every single um, uh, industry that we introduce competition. Price comes down. Healthcare is no exception to those economic facts. Indeed, and we're talking with Elaine Parker, Healthcare for You. It's a great proposal. As I read through here, I want to go to a couple of the highlights because we're kind of short on time, just a few minutes left. But number one I want to talk about are the personal health management accounts. As someone who was aced out of a health savings account by Obamacare, I was really interested in this proposal. Sure. Um, the, the personal health management accounts were absolutely um, restricted under Obamacare. And so what we're proposing is to fundamentally change how people think about health insurance. Who owns it? Right now, 85% of us get our health insurance from our employers. Um, but think about your, your car insurance, your life insurance. We own it. When we change jobs, we take those policies with us. So under, um, under our reform, we're proposing that we expand um, health management accounts or health savings accounts and the ability to fund them um, by employers in lieu of providing the actual health insurance so that uh, patients uh, can then buy their own health insurance policies and they're in control of their health care dollars and they can buy exactly the kind of coverage they want. If they want a catastrophic plan or a Cadillac plan, they have the choice to do that and it allows them to um, customize their needs. It makes it portable from job to job and in and out of the job market. Um, and it also allows them to, uh, as I said, put pick the uh, coverage they want, but use pre-tax dollars, much the way many corporate employees do. Um, And so we will be able to um, engage more with, have greater access to direct primary care, um, which is an absolute low-cost way of getting uh, primary care um, health, and a lot of people supplement that care with a catastrophic health insurance plan. Well, those are outlawed under Obamacare, so we can't even buy those now. Um, In our remaining couple minutes, I also wanted to make sure we talked about expanding direct medical care. Tell us about the model. So direct medical care is, or direct primary care, is the idea of um, direct primary care physicians have opted out of the insurance market altogether. And what they provide is like a monthly membership fee, anywhere from, say, $40 to $60 a month. And you have 24-7 access to your doctor, either through telemedicine, um, in-person visits, um, or, or even uh, Skype and um, text. 
And it's the opportunity for doctors and patients to make the decisions that they want. And once you remove the complexity of the insurance system out of that relationship, the cost of health care comes down because that 40 to $60 a month, which is equivalent to a gym membership, that's the price you pay to see your doctor for primary care. Um, and so, you know, when you look at the cost of um, even the labs that these doctors use for, say, blood tests, if they run a full blood panel and they send it to their lab, I, and I have a doctor that, that shared this with me, she sends it to her lab, who's also not part of the insurance system, that test is $3.50. Mm. If they send it through insurance, that same test is $100. Wow. So that, just to help you understand, it's not the cost of health care that's expensive, seeing your doctor and having those types of tests performed. It is the complexity of our system. And a Medicare for All program, more government, is simply going to make the system more complex and more expensive, and it is going to devastate that patient-doctor relationship. We will no longer be in charge with our doctor of our health care decisions. Bureaucrats will. Elaine, we've got about a minute left. Do you have any uh, any legislative support for this in, in the House or the Senate right now? Anybody getting on board with you? Well, we have. Uh, we are certainly talking to everybody. We will take. We we're not lobbyists, but we will certainly accept any support on that. We uh, we do have a governors committee, uh, Job Creators Network, um, which has about fourteen governors involved in it, and our co chairs. Um, is the governor of Iowa and uh, Kim Reynolds and the governor of Nebraska, Pete Ricketts. They have both endorsed this plan. So has about four or five other of our members. We're working on getting all of them on board as well as the, all of the Republican governors on board and to make this one of their main planks in 2020 because these governors, they want to solve this health care problem and they'll work with us. They're working, they'll work with uh, the, at the federal level and I believe we can all get on the same side and provide patient-centered health care reform where patients and doctors are making the health care decisions. Indeed. Elaine Parker, tell us again how people can get more information on the Health Care for You proposal. Go to healthcareforyou.com. Great. It's very exciting to see a, a rational, cohesive plan put forward, and I hope that people will get behind it. Elaine Parker, thank you for joining us today on The Shilling Show. Thank you.